Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss how some of the most notable conservative fights are shaping up. The last time Labour swept to power in 1997, one of the major events was senior Tory MP Michael Portillo losing his seat. As we have been building up to this election, people have actually probably for the past year now asking, what will be the Portillo moment this election? But first, we'd have to define just what exactly a Portillo moment is, because I think different people may have slightly different ideas. So for me, to qualify, there needs to be two factors at play. First of all, the loss of the seat has to have been a surprise, at least a surprise to the general public. When the 1997 election was called, Portillo was not expected to lose his seat. You could almost have taken it for granted he would win. There came a moment in the campaign when a constituency poll showed he was in danger. But up until that point, there was no question he would retain his seat, even as his party lost MPs all across the country. The second factor is that the losing Tory MP has to be someone who, like Portillo, is expected to play a major leading role in the future direction of the party. For many, Portillo was actually favourite to replace John Major as leader. Now, we can't know for sure that that would have happened but we can be sure he would have been influential enough to have played a leading role. So looking at this year, possible Portillo moments have to be for, for me, for Tory MPs who would have been expected to retain their seats before the campaign started and who are likely to be a leading figure in the parliamentary party after the election if they win their seats. That's how I'm defining it. So Rishi Sunak, for example, yeah, favourite to retain his seat, but tactical voter could mean he loses. He does seem to be vulnerable. He's certainly spending a lot of time campaigning in his own constituency, suggesting that he fears losing as well. However, Sunak is not expected to play a leading role in the future direction of his party after next week. In fact, if he even tried, which I doubt, I suspect he'll be told to sit down and be very quiet, or better still, do what John Major did when he lost in 97, go and watch the cricket. But who are some who do meet both criteria? Well, in terms of those who could be expected to play a leading role, let's start with that list first, if they win. So in terms of the ones that the book is rate and, and you know, you see written about in vari by various conservatives in the media, you're talking about Liz Truss, Robert Jenrick, Priti Patel, Swella Bravman, Kemi Badnock, James Cleverley, Tom Tugendhat, Penny Mordaunt, Victoria Atkins, Grant Shapps and Steve Barclay. So these are, you know, there are some who would also like to sneak Nigel Farage or Boris Johnson into contention there, but I can only work on people who could credibly be part of the leadership contest, which will follow the election quite quickly. Also, I'm not putting Jacob Rees-Mogg in there. Whenever I talk about Portillo, remember, oh, Jacob Rees-Mogg. No, he doesn't meet either criteria. First of all, he's actually very likely to lose his seat anyway. That's sort of baked in. It would be more of a surprise if he won. And also, even if he did win, I'm not sure I see him playing a genuinely leading role in the future. I could see him getting back onto the front bench, but, I, you know, leading role? No, I'm not sure. So in terms of the MRP polls and what they say, first of all, let me remind you, MRP polls don't pick up on local issues. So, for example, if, if a candidate is particularly well liked, they should do better than the MRP would suggest. If a candidate is particularly disliked, they could do worse. It's also not great at picking up on strong local campaigns, like independent campaigns, which actually puts Liz Truss really at the, at the top of the Portillo moment league table at this point, you know, in terms of the most obvious one, because three of the four pollsters give Truss a lead, but not a large one. Though, ironically, it's the, it's the um, oldest MRP which has her losing and the most recent, which has her in the strongest position. But it's an overall average of a 2.6% lead, which is well inside the 5% margin of error. Also worth noting that Liz Truss has been very much an absentee MP in her constituency. Now, given that she's been in cabinet for a lot of years, yet yeah, people understand, you know, if you're in cabinet, you're in, you know, Whitehall five days a week, that's your sort of main job. It's, it, it's, you're not going to be in your constituency as much as, say, a backbench MP. We get that. They get that. But Truss has been a backbencher for a year and a half now and is still reportedly not been bothering much with her voters. Oh, except now. Apparently she is there now. Oh, she's campaigning now in a way that she's never done before. But in the intervening period, yeah, not seen so much. So it would appear that she's not regarded as a great local MP. And of course, her locals are no different to the rest of the country. They're not, they weren't impressed at the damage she did as prime minister. 
Then there's a prominent Conservative independent candidate who has for years argued that Truss should never have been the party's candidate in that area. So although I can't say that Truss is likely to lose her seat, there is plenty of evidence that she could. And she was certainly planning on being a major voice in the party after the election. I'm not sure I saw the party making her leader again, but she would certainly have been involved in shaping the future direction. Then Robert Jenrick, perhaps not that well known in public yet, but has emerged as a more maybe palatable version of Swella Bravman. He's basically aping her on almost everything, particularly the anti-immigration rhetoric, but he doesn't appear to have made enemies of other Tory factions on the far right like Bravman. But polling shows he's up against it in Newark, it's not far from me. Three of the four MRP polls suggesting he's narrowly on course for a loss. It's tight, there's no inevitability about it, but he is certainly in trouble. It looks very much like a toss up here. The question is, would he qualify as a Portillo moment? He could actually end up leading the party. He would not have been expected to have lost his seat a few months ago. So I'd say this could certainly be a possibility. Next would be his mentor, Swella Bravman. Now, I think she's probably a bit too toxic for leader, even for the Tories, but she will doubtless intend to play a major role in whatever Tory front bench emerges. I'm not sure I see the next leader where it'd be a brave move to leave her on the back bench as causing trouble. She's actually one of the safer candidates on the list, according to the MRP polls, but doesn't mean she's safe. Her average lead is 7.2%, which means that a concerted anti Bravman vote from progressives in the constituency and a lack of enthusiasm from the Tory faithful could well see her fall. After all, Bravman spends all her time moaning about like asylum and immigration, a role she led in and failed in. So I can actually see local conservatives thinking, well, she's not really very good, is she? If she lost her seat, I think that would be a really clear Portillo moment. It would be a shock. Even at this stage, it would be a shock. I don't think she's gonna lose her seat. It's just, it's possible. And she's definitely in the running to lead her party. Kemi Badenoch, of course, another front runner to actually lead the party. In fact, generally the book is favourite, although we don't like to talk about political betting at the moment, bit of a sore subject. But the MRPs have her basically the safest on the list. Badenoch is benefiting from multiple things. Most notably, she's in a true blue uh, you know, Tory Essex count constituency. Um, it took some time for polling and other indications to suggest Labour's the tactical vote there as well for quite a long time. It wasn't really clear whether it was Labour or the Lib Dems. It's a constituency very much of two parts. So she is she's protected by a lot of things. So I couldn't advise people to put their hopes in bad knock losing. However, she doesn't have a comfortable lead. You know, it's uh, it's a, she's going to have a very uncomfortable final like nine days waiting to find out. She could lose if people turn out there. You know, again, it's a bit like the Bravman question. If you've got a lot of progressive voters who realise actually Kemi Badnock's very toxic, we don't want her in Parliament, and they decide to band together and vote tactically. And if you've got a lot of Conservative voters there who also think she's not really taking our concerns seriously, it's there. She's there for the taking. And if she did lose, she would be the definitive Portillo moment. Book is favourite to actually lead the party and certainly not expected to lose her seat. She's the safest of the lot. So, you know, although I put Truss at the top of the league table because she's more likely to lose, she's actually a good bet to lose, although we don't talk about betting. <laughs> Badenoch is more likely to lead the party. And so if she did lose, she would definitely be the top Portillo pick. James Cleverly next, he, would, he could be seen as a compromise candidate if the Tories decide that's what they want to heal the party after the election. However, he's having trouble. MRPs give him an average of a 2.3% lead, which is well within the margin of error. I don't think Clevel is particularly disliked, you know, across the board. So I could actually believe he might actually have, he might bring in a premium to his vote so he could do better than MRP polls. I'm not sure I see too many people being especially motivated to oust him. I can believe local voters would be especially motivated to oust a Tory, but not necessarily him personally. I think the local Conservatives probably regard him reasonably well. He's not one of the top, he's, he's, you know, he's, I mean, I know he's ERG, but he's not toxic. He's not a nasty person as such. Um, nonetheless, polling is not giving him much comfort. He's going to have to wear out a lot of shoe leather in Braintree if he wants to even be considered 
for a leading role in his party next week. But as to whether he'd qualify, so losing his seat would be a surprise. Even now, he's still sort of likely to win, like most of these on the list are. He's often mentioned as someone who could lead the party. But I don't know if that's just throwing names in for the sake of compromised candidates. I don't know if there's any great likelihood he would ever be a major architect of the Tory future, even if he didn't lead. Like Swella Bravman, I don't think she's going to lead the party, but you never know. But I do think she will be influential. But James Cleverly, he's been Foreign Secretary and then Home Secretary for quite a few years. I haven't seen any evidence he's done any leading of his party even now. He just sort of does his job, sort of, and that's it. So I'm not sure I would consider him a Portillo moment if he lost, because it would be a shock, but I'm not sure I see him really shaping the future direction of his party. Tom Tugendhat, I suppose, similar in a way. His name is mentioned, I think, because he's like a one nation conservative and there are very few of those sticking their heads above the parapet. But if that faction wants to be involved in the contest to replace Sunak, Tugendhat is as strong a contender as they probably have. According to polls, he's about Braverman levels of safe receipt except he's not toxic. So I think he's probably in a stronger position realistically. Still, any MRP poll of less than 10% is not comfortable for the Tories right now. Bear in mind that MRP polls are generally working on the assumption, because their models generally work on the assumption, that a lot of the undecided former Conservative-leaning voters will probably turn up on the day and vote Conservative, even though they're not saying so at the moment. Now, I think that's a fair assumption. I think absolutely there's going to be a glut of those people. The question is, where do you set the level in the model? How many will and how many will stay at home? Now, it could well be that pollsters are underestimating just how many are prepared to stay at home. And if that is the case, then the polls are actually flattering some of these potential portillos. Pretty Patel's an interesting one. MRP suggests she's in real trouble. However, since leaving government after Johnson fell, quite a long time ago now, she's actually been doing a lot in her constituency, as far as I can tell. And she also has that separation from the Tory shit show of the past couple of years. So it's entirely possible that she's built up a bit of um, credibility amongst her constituents. I think she stands a very good chance of leading the party if she retained her seat. I can see her being seen as someone on the far right, but also a compromise candidate. She's got that link with Boris Johnson. She's also got that sort of link with those who like Nigel Farage. She would definitely qualify as a Portillo moment. The MRPs have it close enough that she could lose. It's possible, even though it would be unexpected. And I do think she could easily play a leading role in the party. Victoria Atkins and Steve Barclay are both outsiders, really. You know, I've put them on the list simply because bookies have put them on the list and they've both hinted at maybe wanting to lead the party. So they've both sort of suggested they'd potentially throw their hat into the ring. I'm not sure I fancy their chances. Both are vulnerable. Atkins, who's the current health secretary, is more vulnerable to Barclay, who was the previous health secretary. In both cases, it would be a surprise if they lost their seats in what have been proper Tory areas for a very long time. But I'm not sure there's enough of a likelihood of them Never mind leading, even shaping the direction of the party to count them as Portillo moments if they lost. So I'm not sure I would put those on the list. Other senior Tories lost their seats in 1997 without it being considered a Portillo. I mean, you know, there was one Portillo moment. That was the seismic one. Um, finally, I do have to mention Penny Mordaunt and Grant Shapps. They'd qualify in that they'd have enough support to potentially play a leading role in their party after the election. You can't rule them out actually leading. However, polls don't really give them much hope. Grant Shapps is gone. According to the polls, Grant Shapps is out of there. Forget it. Sayonara, son. Both are actually expected to lose their seats. Mordaunt has the best chance. She's still got a fighting chance. But nonetheless, the writing seems to have been on the wall for them for quite a while as well, long before the election was called. It would actually be a bigger shock if they retained their seats. But if I had to write down my top three Portillo moments to watch out for, it would be this. Kemi Badnock, Liz Truss and Pretty Patel. If any of these candidates lost, I think it would both be a shock and change the future course of the Conservative Party. But let me know what you think. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.